You know, I've never been a fan of when anime sequels, instead of using numbers or a subtitle to differentiate a new season from the previous one, decide to just add additional punctuation, much to the confusion of search engines. New game now becomes new game. K-On becomes K-On. Working becomes working, only to later become working. Of course, sometimes you don't even need a second season. In comes Keijo like, you underestimate my power. I can see some of the significance behind it. In this case, the addition of exclamation marks is just an attempt to add to the excitement of more. So it's almost fitting, in a way, that for the second season of Kaguya-sama, Love is War, instead of adding an exclamation point for excited emphasis, they added a question mark. Love is war? Because a series that presented that subtitle so confidently before is now unsure if that's the right direction for its characters any longer. When the first season of Love is War wrapped up in the middle of last year, I heavily enjoyed the entire experience, but the biggest question I had was how much longer the show's charade could last. I don't say a charade in the way that it was like, it was leading the audience on or trying to deceive the audience in any way, but rather that it's a show with a very narrow shtick. While that worked perfectly for a single 12 episode season to get a decent amount of mileage out of it, could that continue for a whole nother season? Well, no. And yes. This first reaction is brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. In Kaguya-sama Love is War, you have two major characters. The titular Kaguya, vice president of the student council, and Shirogane, the president. These two are locked in a fierce battle, for they both love each other almost literally to death, but cannot, under any circumstances, be the one to make the first move. It's a pride thing. Thus, the entire first season revolved around the two of them almost in an internal back and forth, trying to outmaneuver the other into a corner where they would have no choice but to confess their undying love, only for their opponent to break free and do the same song and dance another day. There were obstacles, of course. Both of them lead lifestyles on the opposite ends of the class scale. Their naivety bites them in the back end more often than not, but none of that compares to the biggest obstacle of all, which comes in the form of secondary character Chica, the agent of all chaos. She busts in, all oblivious, and ruins not just one of their plans for success, but both at the same time. Chica is just the best. But that brings us back to the problem that I had at the end of season one. How much longer could this show keep going? How much more can they drag on the will they won't they situations with full knowledge that as soon as they finally bring our two leads together, the show might as well end. This is where that titular question mark addition comes in. The solution is not to immediately resolve the romantic conflict, but to instead add additional conflicts that work as a buffer. It has to be something that our main characters need to resolve in the same entertaining fashion as before, but something that also delays them from having to focus on their own romantic goals. At the start, that new conflict is the status of the student council itself. It was a curious thing when the show suddenly decided to be all, oh, time is passing, and now our time in the student council is over. But that was simply the start of a new arc that would see our characters in a race for re-election, the introduction of new characters for fun and profit, and a shift in how dynamics worked. If only for a time. Now, instead of the constant back and forth in plans and schemes between our leads, we see them forced to team up with their allies for the common goal of returning the show to the status quo. But even then, the status quo doesn't necessarily remain the same as rivals become friends and new characters take a more active role. It's how the series has done its best to keep things feeling fresh. There's still the constant mind games between our leads, but now there's far more curveballs than what they were used to dealing with in the previous season, which for us makes it even more entertaining. I found that some of the situations and gags from this season landed far better because of this, but of course, comedy is subjective. What shouldn't be subjective, however, is the statement that Kaguya-sama, Love is War, showcases some of the best writing in the comedic romance genre. I'm sure some people will disagree, but of course they are free to be wrong in their corner of the internet. Why do I believe that this show is a narrative masterclass, as it were? Because 
it takes a really great narrative to keep us invested even when we know how it ends. We know perfectly well how this romance is going to end. Do you really think that either Kaguya or Shirogane will let high school pass them both by, they go their separate ways and nothing happens? Unfreaking likely they will inevitably get together. It is just a question of how and when. Maybe at closing ceremonies, when they can't run out the clock anymore and both of them will confess at the exact same time. That's how this show will end. Probably. But we don't care about that while we watch it. We want to know things like how a situation started by Kaguya wanting to know if Shirogane is a man slut by checking what underwear he uses spirals out of control until other students think he is a potential sex offender due to a misunderstanding. The show has really expanded in a big way. Hell, that's even apparent in the opening when we went from the lyrics, oh, mister, mister, to daddy do real quick. I'm not sure if I'm as fond of the new opening as much as the old, though. The song is still a bop and the animation is rock solid and probably even better in the editing department than the first one, but it's not as snappy as the original, which I really did like. Also, we still, at the time of this recording anyway, haven't had a worthy successor to the Chica Dance. But there are still a few episodes left to add that in. Those few episodes are also why I'm pretty confident that this season's wrap-up won't change my overall opinion. Kaguya was great, is still great, and if we are blessed enough to get a third season due to some producer's wonderful foresight, then we can continue to enjoy new episodes for a while. But even if we don't, the likely end will be a second season that doesn't conclude the story. Because why would they when the manga is still ongoing? And we will have to patiently wait to see if a third season will be in the works. But we can still enjoy what we have and what we got. But damn if I won't miss this show when it's gone. And there we have it! Welcome back to the end of the video! It's the fun time where I don't have a script and then you move on at some point. I don't know where I'm going with this. Unlike last year, Kakiusama has swapped internet streaming services to a point. Season 1 is still available on Crunchyroll as before, but both Season 1 and now the new Season 2, with which we were talking about today, is available over on Funimation's website. So you can go and watch it there if you can navigate their website. Good luck with that. Sometimes that's a problem. Hopefully they'll fix it. Probably not, but you know. We can dream! And this show really is one of those ones that's good to just kind of not rush, not blitz through. It's good to take it in small doses. The The episodes themselves are even lined out that way, where every individual episode has like three or four different stories split up over the 20 some odd minutes, and it's really digestible in that way, and that's kind of how I recommend that you go about it if it is something that continues to interest you. As we end the video, though, special thank you to our patrons who allow me to be able to do what I do, and specifically, I'd like to thank great patrons like Richard Emil Bradley, Rune Jacobson, Rifen Bonaparte, City Amico, Calhoun Boy, and Hector Montemayor, because you guys are especially awesome, and I thank you. We are now nearing the end of the season. Only a few things left to talk about until we move on to summer and whatever happens to actually air. We'll see. But until next time, ladies, gentlemen, and others, watch more anime and stay frosty.